Welcome to AP Biology. This video is on the structure and function of macromolecules. Macromolecules are the large organic molecules that living organisms are composed of. All macromolecules are polymers. Large organic molecules made up of many building blocks put together. These building blocks are called monomers. No matter what type of macromolecule we're talking about, all monomers are put together using the same reaction. A polymer is always broken down using the same reaction. Monomers are put together, linked together, to make a polymer using the process of dehydration synthesis. Dehydration synthesis involves the removal of water and a bond is formed between the monomers creating a polymer. All polymers are broken apart using hydrolysis. The addition of water is going to break chemical bonds. Here we see an example. Uh, here's a short polymer. Each of these circles represents a monomer. So this short polymer is made up of one, two, three monomers. And we want to attach another monomer to it. So what's going to happen is we're going to have the hydrogen of one monomer. You're going to have the hydroxyl of the other. You see here you have H2O. Water is removed. A chemical bond is made, adding the monomer to the growing polymer. What you just saw there was dehydration synthesis, the removal of water. If we want to break apart this polymer, we perform hydrolysis, the addition of water is going to break the chemical bond, releasing that monomer from the polymer, right? breaking it down. Uh, every cell in the body of a living organism has thousands of different types of macromolecules. Macromolecules are going to vary among the cells of an organism. They're going to vary more within a species and vary even more between species. So, in a, in a way, the differences between organisms, the differences between um, species, are con partly contributed to the different macromolecules that they contain. We're going to see that an immense variety of polymers can be built from a small set of different monomers. Here's our first type of uh, macromolecules, the carbohydrate. Carbohydrates are our body's preferred energy source. They are the macromolecule that prefers to enter cell respiration in which they are broken down to make ATP, the body's usable energy source. The monomer of a carbohydrate is called a monosaccharide. Um, some examples of monosaccharides are things like glucose, fructose, and ribose. They are ready energy. Right, they could directly enter cell respiration. They give us immediate energy because they don't have to be broken down at all through hydrolysis. You can see that these uh, monosaccharides have a characteristic ring structure. You could always identify a monosaccharide. These rings uh, could be a hexagon. They could be a pentagon, depending upon what type of monosaccharide it is. All monosaccharides follow a similar um, molecular formula. You see CH2O and then N right here, right, where N is the number of carbons. So glucose has six carbons. So it's C6H12O6. Here you see dehydration synthesis taking place between two monosaccharides to make a disaccharide. A disaccharide is transport form of, uh, of carbohydrate, of sugars. Um, a common disaccharide is going to be sucrose. Sucrose is created by bonding together glucose and fructose. You can see that through dehydration synthesis, water is removed and uh, that chemical bond is made. The chemical bond between monosaccharides is called a glycosidic bond. Here you see another disaccharide, maltose, 
and that is created by bonding together glucose to another glucose and again that's done through dehydration synthesis. You can see that glucose has this hexagon structure, fructose has this uh, pentagon structure. The polymer of a carbohydrate is called a polysaccharide. They are typically used for energy storage or they're also used for structure. Um, plants store food, they store energy as a polysaccharide called starch. Animals store energy as a polysaccharide called glycogen. Um, if you consume more carbohydrates than your body needs for energy, the first thing you're going to store the carbohydrates for or, or as is glycogen. After all, after all your glycogen reservoirs are full, then you will store excess energy as body fat. There are also a couple structural polysaccharides. One is cellulose. That's the major structural polysaccharide in plants. It's what makes plant cell walls. Uh, insects in their exoskeleton and in the cell walls of fungi have a modified polysaccharide called chitin. Here you see an insect molting, shedding its exoskeleton, and this exoskeleton here is primarily made up of chitin. Starch and cellulose uh, look very similar. They're both made up of long chains of glucose, glycosidic bonded together. Starch is a polysaccharide that we can eat and break down and burn as energy. Cellulose, however, we cannot digest at all. We commonly call it fiber in our diet. Um, but if they're both made up of long chains of glucose, what's the difference between the two? Uh, here we see the major difference is the direction of the glycosidic bond. In starch, that glycosidic bond is facing downward. In cellulose, that glycosidic bond is facing upward. You can see that there are two forms of glucose. There's an alpha glucose where this hydroxyl group is going down and a beta glucose where this hydroxyl group is going up. You can see that starch is made up of all alpha glycosidic bonds. Our digestive systems have enzymes that can break alpha glycosidic bonds. In cellulose, there are all beta glycosidic bonds. We do not contain enzymes that could break down the beta glycosidic bond, and as a result, cellulose or fiber goes through our digestive tract unchanged. Right? Does not get digested, cannot be burned for energy. Here you see a picture of what cellulose looks like, and you can see it's not just made up of ten starch molecules, or 10, I'm sorry, glucose molecules beta glycosidic bonded together, but is made up of hundreds or thousands of glucose monosaccharides. Lipids. Lipids is our second major type of macromolecule. Uh, lipids are commonly called fats or oils. Their technical name is going to be a triglyceride and the triglyceride is the polymer. The monomers of a triglyceride are fatty acids, right? A triglyceride is made up of one, two, three fatty acids bonded to a glycerol. Glycerol is this monomer highlighted in gray here. The fatty acids are going to be bonded to the glycerol, again, through dehydration synthesis. The only thing that changes is the name of the bond. The name of the bond is an ester bond. Um, if you look at fats, fats are all um, hydrophobic, right? They are extremely nonpolar and they separate out of water. If you look at these fatty acids, there are two types of fatty acids we can have. You can have a saturated fatty acid or you can have an unsaturated fatty acid. The saturated, the fatty acids that you see in this picture here are all saturated. Each carbon has a single bond between them 
and as a result we have the maximum number of hydrogens. So the fatty acid is saturated with hydrogen. When you have all single bonds like this, the fatty acids form nice linear chains and they pack very tightly together. As a result, saturated fatty acids are solid at room temperature. With an unsaturated fatty acid, the single bond is replaced by a double bond. When you have a double bond, that's going to cause two hydrogens to be removed. So this fatty acid is no longer saturated with hydrogen. This double bond is going to do something to this chain. It's going to put a kink in the chain and it's going to go off at, at an angle. So these fatty acids cannot pack as densely together and as a result unsaturated fatty acids are, or unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. Here you see a saturated fatty acid. You have a nice linear chain and you commonly see saturated fatty acids with animal fats, with butter, so on and so forth, all solid at room temperature. Oils contain unsaturated fatty acids, or you can see this bend that takes place in the fatty acid chain. Again, all fats, whether they are saturated or unsaturated, are hydrophobic. They separate out of water. The carbohydrates that we saw earlier, they are all hydrophilic, right? They're polar and therefore they dissolve in water. Um, a diet that's rich in saturated fats can contribute to cardiovascular disease because these solid fats that travel throughout our bloodstream can contribute to plaque deposits. Today a bad process is taking place in which we hydrogenate unsaturated fats. We turn them from liquid to solid by adding hydrogen. By adding hydrogen what you're essentially doing is you're changing it from an unsaturated fat to a saturated fat. Hydrogenating vegetable oils um, can also create trans fats. With a trans fat the hydrogens on either side of the double bond are on opposite sides. Um, so if we're going back here, this picture that I drew right here, these hydrogens on either side of the double bond, they are on opposite sides of the double bond. And what that'll do is it'll keep this chain linear. And that's going to cause these fatty acids to pack very densely together and to be solid at room temperature. Um, when we have an unsaturated fat that's an oil, what you want to have is you want to have both of those hydrogens on the same side. You want to have the cis transform, um, tris for, cis formation, I'm sorry, which creates that bend in the fatty acid chain. So trans fats, which are technically unsaturated fats, but are still solid at room temperature, they also contribute to cardiovascular disease. A phospholipid is very similar to a triglyceride, except that in a phospholipid, the third fatty acid is replaced by a phosphate group. Here you see a picture of a phospholipid. So you have two fatty acids. You can see that one is saturated, one that is unsaturated. They are bonded to a glycerol, but instead of having the third fatty acid, instead what we have is a phosphate group right here. And if you look at that phosphate group, you can see that it is charged, it is polar. When we draw a picture of a phospholipid, we draw it looking like this. And it's a molecule that's called an amphipathic molecule. That means that it has a polar or hydrophilic region and a nonpolar or hydrophobic region. Here you can see we draw it with a hydrophilic head that contains that phosphate group and you have the two nonpolar hydrophobic tails that are made up of the fatty acid chains. These phospholipids are really important because they are the major molecule found in the cell membrane. 
if you put phospholipids in water, since they're amphipathic, they are immediately going to arrange themselves into a bilayer, a double layer of phospholipids. If you look at this bilayer, you can see that like is always positioned next to like, hydrophilic to hydrophilic, hydrophobic to hydrophobic. Water is the major molecule inside and outside of cells. So when you put phospholipids into water, they're going to arrange themselves into a bilayer where the hydrophilic heads are going to be facing the water both inside and outside of the cells and the hydrophobic tails are going to be facing each other. This is really important because you can see that it requires no energy to make a phospholipid bilayer. It's simply due to the interactions that take place between like molecules. Finally, the last macromolecule that we're going to look at in this video is cholesterol and other steroids. These steroids could be things like testosterone and estrogen, progesterone. They're always easily identifiable because they're made up of four interconnected carbon rings. Uh, they perform many different functions within the cell. Cholesterol is found within uh, the cell membrane. Cholesterol is also found in the myelin sheaths that insulate neurons in the body. Uh, steroids are used as hormones that direct the process of protein synthesis within the body. Uh, cholesterol um, is both really important for the cell but could be detrimental to the organism as a whole if you have too much of it. Just like the saturated fat, it could be involved in plaque formation and cause um, arthrosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. That concludes this video.